Hello everyone, this is Joe. Hello, hello. Today we're interviewing Julia Lucrezia and we're gonna talk about how she ditched effort and found confidence when she's acting and taping. And there she is, so I'm gonna make her join us. ditching effort and finding confidence and we'll touch on the word confidence because I never use it but everybody else does so we'll touch on that yeah. Hi. Hi. all right so we need to turn off not turn off but like all the way down is that better um one two three where yes now yes. I, yes now i can yes. hear you perfect all right how are you doing i'm okay okay uh it's been a long day but i'm happy to be here yeah i'm happy to see you all right so let's start with your beginning as an actress when did you start acting um, I think it was around fourth grade. My mm -hmm. I was I was always in dance and, and stuff like that since I was very little. But in fourth grade, I remember uh, being my first uh, acting class. My mom would drive me and a couple of friends like an hour out of my hometown to, to wow. take a class at a cool, cool mom center. <laughs> yeah, really, yeah. huge like a big sacrifice, and. Um, and yeah, that's that's how I that's when I first uh, acted on on stage, mm -hmm. um, and uh, I kind of continued to kind of study it in college more as a minor, um, yeah. Because it was always like have a main thing, and you know you can act and do it for fun, but not really, never really considered it my mm -hmm. my main thing. And then in recent years, after having a whole entire career in translation. Uh, I've really owned up to to my acting path, um, uh -huh. so so that's where I, that's kind of like where it started. Okay. Yeah. And so, since how long did you pick it back up? Like for the pandemic. Oh, during the pandemic, you picked yeah, it back up. Yeah, it was it was kind of ironic because everything was shutting down. But I, yeah. this is kind of a dark thought that I would yeah. come back to, but. I, in my mind, I was like, well, it's all going to shit. So I might as well do what I love. Like it was yes. literally, uh, I was finishing a master's in translation. I was doing my thesis. I, I handed it in, but like, you know, I was just like, I'm yeah. never going to work on this. Yeah. <laughs> just, well, it's going to, it's going to serve you as an actress, right? I mean, your yeah. English is amazing. What other languages do you speak? So my first language is Spanish. Um, yeah. I'm fluent in French and in Portuguese. Wow. Well. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Hello, Market. She speaks four languages. <laughs> okay. And so you started again in the pandemic. Mm -hmm. Did you notice a difference uh, when you were acting as a child and then when you were acting again as an adult? How, how was that? How, how was the experience of acting? different uh, so i guess as a child the the um, the like imagination was much more central to my acting than when i came back as an yeah. adult or even when i took uh classes as i'm like in my college as a minor um and i have this very specific memory of knowing when i was like not being true as a child because I remember we had like a couple of uh, performances and in the first performance I was as the curtain closed I was supposed to throw some confetti or some fake snow or something and I remember the first time we did the show I like quote like threw it up in the air and the curtain closed and the next day I wanted to emulate that exact thing I wanted to get that like spontaneous thing back and I like I forced it and I remember when the curtain closed I was like oh that didn't feel right yeah. <laughs> but I just kind of discarded it but I have that yeah. little memory yeah. yeah and then how is it when you started acting as an adult um 
a lot of issues with memorization as an adult, actually. Um, yeah, also like trying to find like the methodology that would work for me. Um, lots of, since I'm also a writer, then I can, I, I, I don't know, I've, I've tried a lot of ways to, to yeah. work and to get into to work with the character. So what I'm hearing you say is the comparison as an adult compared to when you were a child is like as an adult you were trying kind of external ways to act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And Whereas, yeah, a lot of, yeah, when, yeah. I was going to say a lot of focus on like, you know, once I came back, I, I did go through a through a process of, of um, a mental health. And so I dealt a lot with, with my body and how I looked mm -hmm. and how like, and as an adult, I just, it's like, I've done a lot of work on that front on um, accepting myself, but, mm -hmm. but, but there was still more. When yeah. I back at home. I so yeah, it sounds like it's all what's, what's from the outside, what's perceived from the outside, how to do mm -hmm. it right, how to look good. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of that yeah. stuff, and that's not fun. Okay, um, is that when you decided to reset yourself and actually go within, or did something else happen before you decided to reset? I'm trying to remember, I just know I did one of the exercises, and one of the things that kept Okay, there's was, there was something like technical and then there's something very spiritual that drew me into this work. So the technical thing was like, how do I cry on cue? Like, mm. I'm so silly, but there's, you know, there's a lot written about it and a yeah. lot of people can say different things about it. But that was something that coming back and without any like conservatory training or anything like that, I was like, oh no, I'm never going to succeed if I can't uh -huh. cry on cue. Uh -huh. um, and it happened to me in a short film. Uh, I like a year before I started to reset, um, where I had to like cry spontaneously and I, I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. um, and on a more spiritual level, there was this thing uh, to do again with self confidence and, and self love and um, almost like courage. Uh, sometimes I would find myself before meeting a casting director or director, just anyone, I would just like, or any. I would find myself rehearsing conversations, yeah, which yeah. is like for real life. Yeah. And so I just thought that was very unnatural. And I thought this, this process was going to be just a, a, a new way to, to yeah. that maybe. Well, I'm glad that you caught that because I think a lot of us are caught there, but we're not aware that we're rehearsing even conversations you know so for you to be able to look at that and catch it and go oh wait this this doesn't work for me this doesn't make any sense for me not that it's good or bad or right or wrong but for me it doesn't make any sense and then I'm gonna address that is is pretty wise okay mm -hmm. so so then you decide to reset how was that how was the experience of resetting um at first uh, it was just uncomfortable and um, yeah. uncomfortable, yeah, completely. Just like not gonna sugarcoat that. No, no. Um, I get a lot of um, migraines naturally, mm. and I've been working through it through nutrition and stress management. But showing up for doing the reset work like for thirty three days taught me to work as I am, to show up as I am. If I have. If I'm not feeling like it, I still have to show up. Not because I have to, but because you choose to. Yeah, yeah. And because mm -hmm. I'm, again, we go back to, I'm, I want to know. I'm, you know, I'm curious. So, um, what that's like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, was it all the way uncomfortable, or did you experience more than discomfort and then other textures too? Right, no, definitely a lot, a lot of um, just like doing the uh, the reset, like here in the space in my room, 
um, a lot of times I've found like, oh no, I can't do this or that because I don't have a studio. But then I've done so many things um, in terms of uh, emotional exploration mm -hmm. just in this space. And this is not a professional studio, this is my room. Yeah. Um, and a lot of joy and like pure, pure joy and gratitude uh -huh. for, for just sort of the depth and the variety of things that I am a, like, they're already here. Like, yeah. They're already here. I just have to access them. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty amazing. That's a, a nice full range that you've experienced. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so how is it now? What did you get out of it? We talked about effort and confidence, which I like to call mm -hmm. presence or trusting. But can you talk a little bit about that, how you're realizing that you, yeah, you don't need to effort to get to your truth? Yeah. Um, so... A lot of, so again, I go with two, two points here. On the more technical side, I have mm -hmm. these technical, physical tools that if I'm about to perform or if I'm feeling, if I have to tape or, or even if, if I'm going to, to do a rehearsal and I'm just um, noticing that I'm in my head or that I'm judging myself, I have like concrete tools. Mm -hmm. To, to you know to, to work with that because it's not yeah. like I'm exiting I'm not like, yeah you know. yeah um, and then on so yeah uh, and then on the on this topic of confidence it, I used to well I have on my Spotify a playlist that's the confidence playlist and mm -hmm. I used to use it a lot and recently what I noticed is like not that I I'd rather instead of like putting on the hat of com the confidence hat yeah i'd rather just see what's there mm -hmm. and work with that and i've showed up you know at, to the comedy stage or or in rehearsal and mm -hmm. said i don't want to do this anymore and everybody's like yeah you have to work with that and i'm like i yeah. know yeah great so, and you're calling it a hat i like to call it a mask, a mask. because yeah. really it feels like when we're trying to look confident it's mm -hmm. really about um it's for the others right i'm trying to be confident so it means i'm putting something on top to mm -hmm. hide what's really going on and to pretend to everyone that i'm good or right mm -hmm. or strong or powerful and that's really what we do with a mask of confidence mm -hmm. uh it's pretend it's fake it's not authentic and when you're removing that mask taking it off and daring yes to feel whatever it is that you're feeling then you're bringing humanity then you're bringing aliveness then you're bringing truth freedom instinct and then your unique essence right because who has those feelings in that moment it's only you mm -hmm. yeah that's mm -hmm. pretty cool that's pretty cool is there anything else that <coughs> you would like to share about your experience resetting um what else i uh, i think the most important thing is that i've been able to like i'm always in this process of committing that to acting and i've i've had to really learn to value my word a lot of us we say we're going to do something and then we go into this oh i said i was going to do that but and it yeah. starts with little things mm -hmm. and then when you when you blink it's like you spent 10 years saying you're going to do something and you don't do it yeah, exactly. and this you know applies to larger plans so the reset work has like at the core it has taught me to respect my word yeah. um and to really discern what is aligned with with what I want to do and, and what isn't and and you know and that's not good at whatever isn't aligned with me isn't good or bad it's just not aligned yeah. with my path yeah um, yeah, yeah. so yeah yeah definitely um saying you're gonna do something and then not doing it is not 
really a problem for others mm. um, it's really a problem for ourselves when we are relating to ourselves as unreliable right I say I'm mm. I'm gonna do this and then I don't do it what I'm wiring into my system is that I am unreliable that I lie mm -hmm. that I don't show up that I'm untrustworthy and then of course when we do that with the little things in our life um, and it wires that relationship with myself that's how I know myself I just know I don't show up I don't do things so when we're offered a big opportunity a big part mm -hmm. a big project if we know that we're unreliable and that we can't trust ourselves then then it gets dangerous so yes it's really important to uh, make sure that you are speaking your truth and showing up for your truth because then that's how you know how powerful you are and you show up that way and that's a big part of the work that we do and rewire in the reset yeah so you can walk mm -hmm. that you can walk that talk yeah. and show up the way you say you show up it's really crucial yeah that's great thank you for sharing that yeah thank you yeah all right this is my first live i've never done one of these say that again <laughs> i've never done you? one of these like lives i've never done it online so this was interesting yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. well thank you thank you for showing up thank you for sharing um mm -hmm. like if anyone is watching this and feeling oh this purchase something or this resonates or this is scary or I'm really curious about that <laughs> change and transformation is definitely uncomfortable expansion is uncomfortable but if you've been catching yourself doing a lot of different things or doing the same thing and getting the same type of unfulfilling result let us know you can type reset in the comments and we'll send you a link so you can start looking into yourself into your truth great well thank you so much julia lovely to see you i'll see you soon yeah bye guys bye